Okay, welcome to Find Truth 88. Today, I want to address the topic of backbiting. Now, this should be pretty common sense uh, for us all because the scriptures are pretty clear, very clear, that we should not be a people who backbite, that we should not be a people who speak unfavorably behind one's back. Uh, that is a very evil thing to do, uh, you know, and, and that's, that's really uh, the MO of Satan. When you even look to see how Satan wooed Eve in the garden, uh, first thing that Adam wasn't even there, and then he whispers into Eve's ear, did, did God really, really say that? See, uh, a backbiter is a very smooth individual. Uh, many of them are. And, and many backbiters, what they do, they befriend you. And for an individual to actually heed uh, uh, the words of a backbiter, that is because they have been befriended. That is because that person is probably their friend. And many times what a backbiter will do is you have a common friend. So there's another individual that's your friend that also knows this individual. And maybe, let's say, Rachel and, and John uh, uh, got into it. And now you have some common friends between Rachel and John. So Rachel is upset. And now she starts to subtly go after John behind his back. John has no idea that he's being talked about. He may have an inkling of an idea because maybe his common friends with uh, Rachel are, are dropping off and no longer want to have anything to do with them. So that right there is, like I said, that gives you an example of how a lot of backbiting works. It's very common. I can even give you an example, say, like uh, one-third of the angels being kicked out of heaven. I mean, think about this for a second. Do you think that Satan really just pulled this off all in a day's time? I guarantee you that Satan worked at this for quite some time. A little seed here, a little seed there. Why is why is God doing it this way? Why why does he have to have the angels circle the throne saying holy, holy, holy? Why why does he have to be the only one to sit on the throne? Why is he the only one who gets to sit on the throne? Why this? Why that? Instead of going to, to, to God himself, he goes behind his back and speaks. And of course, the Lord knew it. It's not like anything, it's not like anything catches the Lord uh, off guard. But that's the very uh, nature of a backbiter. A backbiter will whisper behind your ear. Okay, so if somebody is speaking unfavorably about someone else to you, uh, it's very important that you don't take ear to those things. Uh, just the fact that an individual is doing that, we can be sure of one thing of this individual, that they are very rotten. They have some very rotten things in their heart. Now, it's also common that uh, many backbiters, because we see a lot of backbiting in the church, okay, and, and that's this is why this was addressed so much in the scriptures. It is very common that many backbiters are very seasoned in the word of God. They know the scriptures, and I'm bringing up this point up because one of the things that we have to be careful about in knowing the scriptures and, and, and being uh, mature in the word is that a spirit of pride can rise up in that in thinking that, well, I know it all, okay? I, I, I know the word and, uh, you know, it's no big deal. I can get away with this. This doesn't apply to me. And so we start picking and choosing things in the scriptures that, you know, we think that we uh, 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 can obey and not obey. Uh, why do you think we see... Uh, authority figures in the church who molest kids or have affairs. All these groundbreaking uh, uh, scandals that break loose in the church. It's a spirit of pride. People, th these individuals are getting cocky and thinking they, 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 they're so busy preaching the word that they forget to actually practice the word. Hello? 
So they'll they'll tell you do as I say, but then they won't they say do as I say, not as I do, right? And so this is a common issue. So er, when when let me say it like this: when we are sharing and teaching the word, and and individuals come to us for advice. That is an area that can, if we have a open door to that in our heart, that can easily, easily lead us down a path of pride and arrogance because we're so used to everyone coming to us for advice. We're so used to having all the answers. We're so used to knowing the scriptures and that's great. Knowledge of the scriptures is great, but if we don't have wisdom, if we don't have humility, humility to go with that, then we are going to be a very rotten individual. And that's where you see a lot of backbiting arising out of that also. You know, I want to take you to Matthew chapter 10. I kind of want to make this point before I get any further into the backbiting. Uh, this is verse 34. Uh, Jesus speaking here, reading this out of the King James Version, which says, Think not that I have come to send peace on the earth. I have not to send peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against his mother, or against her mother, excuse me, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. Now, what the Lord's saying right there is that when we come into the kingdom of light, we're no longer going to be part of the world. We're no longer going to be part of that darkness that is going to form division. Okay, naturally that forms division. And same thing with friends. When we come to the Lord, now we don't want to we don't want to do all the things the Lord starts to renew our, our heart, a new uh, that process of glory to glory starts uh, taking uh, effect in our life. And so as we go on and on in our walk, there are things that are going to fall off or going to peel off like an onion, like an onion peel, peeling that next layer of the onion. And it's going to cause division. It's going to cause tension amongst uh, the people that we uh, 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 have uh, known for some time. Because now they're going to be like, well, why don't you want to party anymore? Why don't you want to do this or that anymore? Or family members saying, oh, what, what's up with that prayer of yours? That causes division. And so we see that that's one division that the Lord spoke of in the scriptures. So when an individual is standing up for truth and contending for the faith and calling out false teachings, that's not backbiting. That's not what the Lord is con considers backbiting. Backbiting is when you go behind someone's back, the other person has, is not aware of it, and you speak unfavorably. I mean, it's not like you're completely trashing them out. I mean, you can be subtly doing this too. You can be subtly uh, speaking unfavorable words about this individual to a common friend that this uh, that to a common friend that both of you know all in the purpose of swaying the common friend over to your side because you got your feelings hurt now now, now let me bring up a, a, a point about uh, feelings getting your feelings hurt you know and I, I, I'll say this too Matthew 18 it says that if we have an issue with our brother that we go to them privately now an individual who's deceiving the flock, that's not a private matter. That's a body-wide matter. Okay, so if someone was, say, raping kids or raping individuals or murdering someone, I'm not going to be their confidant, right? I'm not going to go to them privately and, and try to, to help them hide their sins. I'm going to put that individual on blast, okay? So I'm not going to be a confidant of someone who's leading people, the masses, to the lake of fire. I'm going to put them on blast. So understand the difference of what was being spoken here when the Lord's speaking of division as the works of the flesh. Now, we're not in the works of the flesh because we've been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. The Lord calls that division, but that's not the division that he's speaking of in the works of the flesh. The division he's speaking of in the works of the flesh is backbiting, going behind someone's back and speaking evil and unfavorably of them without their knowing. That is what the Lord is speaking of there. So when you say, go, when the scripture says in Matthew 18, go to your brother privately, that is if there is a one-on-one -on -one issue. If you have a problem between you and the person that you're upset with, 
instead of backbiting and going behind their back and rallying, rallying the troops. I call that gathering the posse, swaying the posse, because the whole purpose of backbiting is to sway the common friend over to your side so they're no longer friends or, or, or uh, 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 friends or what's the other word I'm looking for? Uh, well, anyway, the person that you know. And so, 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 so they they want they want the posse. They they want to sway the, the the common friends over to their side. That way, they're no longer uh, want to have anything to do with the other person. That is the the root of backbiting right there, and that is the division that is spoken of in Galatians chapter five and other places and so many places in the scripture that talks about do not sow strife. And, uh, and and be um, a malicious gossip, a whisperer, a snake charmer. Okay, all these all these words, all these phrases that are used to describe being a gossiper, a snake charmer, which goes back to the the garden again, right? That's what Satan did with Eve. He whispered in uh, her ear like that. I want to take you now to. Uh, Proverbs, and like I said, there's so many verses uh, in the scriptures dealing with this. I want to talk about a little bit about being, say, like identifying a prideful individual because this can be very, uh, this can be like a camouflage. This can be very deceiving at times because when a person is easily offended or always getting offended by what other people say, that right there can oftentimes, now hear me when I say this, oftentimes that right there can be a very uh, key sign to pride. A an individual getting their feelings hurt all the time because people uh, are saying things about them that aren't nice. And, they get, and, and don't get me wrong, we all have feelings. Uh, I don't think anyone that I know loves to hear negative things about themselves. But when it gets to the point where offense you know, it, it, that root of offense, a root of bitterness grows because you're always getting offended because somebody's saying something about you that you don't like. And it gets to the point of you either get angry or you play the, the, the tear, the, the, the crying game, the, you, you play the, 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 the crying card, I, I would say, where you try to make people feel sorry for you. So if you're easily offended, that is a key sign that you're a prideful individual. Because if you're easily offended, then you will also, if you're easily offended by negative remarks, you will also be uh, easily puffed up by praise. Hello? If you're easily offended by negative remarks, you will be easily puffed up. Oftentimes, you'll be easily puffed up into pride and arrogance by praise and positive remarks. Hello? Those, 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 that's a two-edged sword there. Now, if you're an individual that does not let negative remarks get you all bent out of shape and offended all the time and bitter, uh, then you will likely be also a person who will not let positive remarks get you all puffed up and get your head all blown up and thinking you're all that, that you're the best thing since apple pie. I want to take you to Proverbs chapter 16 as I begin to end the message with this. I think it's safe to say that if someone is... If you are the recipient, if you are if you are giving ear to someone who is backbiting an individual and speaking unfavorably about them behind their back, because again, the whole purpose of backbiting is to get the posse, is to gather the posse, to round up the posse on your side. Okay, that that's the whole purpose of backbiting to to, to get everyone on your side because you're 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 hurt, your lips hanging out, you your feelings got you got butt hurt. And now you want to demonize the person that you're upset with versus obeying the scriptures like Matthew 18 says and go to them privately and work it out. Instead of going to them privately and working it out, you want to go to the posse and demonize them slowly. I call it slow roasting because they're just not going to come out and say it. They're going to try to be spiritual about it and holy and they're going to, they're, they're going to, they may even have scriptures backing up their backbiting just like. These jokers have scriptures that, that back up their falsely prophesying and their date setting. See, if, if, see, and that's the danger in being knowledgeable in the word and, and without humility 
is that our knowledge will go in and dig something out of the scriptures to back up our era. Because if we are walking in humility, we will not do that. Humility will, will, will cause us to repent and say, you know what? I was wrong. Let me lay this anger down. Let me, let me not go to, let me not let the sun go down on my anger. Let me repent. Let me drop it. Let me let it go as spoken of in Matthew eleven twenty five. Let it go. Forgive. Here's Proverbs 16, 28. I'm reading this out of the Amplified Version. A perverse man sows strife. And see, they sow it like seeds. And so it's, it's subtle, you know, and, and a lot of times if, if, you're not, if you're not walking in discernment, you're not going to notice this. You know, you, you probably won't even notice it until over a period of time. But maybe by that time, you've already, you, you already think John's a demon over here because Rachel then demonized him slowly. He's, Rachel has slow roasted John over a period of six months rotisserie him for six months and now you think he's a demon because now all those words that that Rachel was speaking in your ear about John hello um but Rachel's so holy she's in the scriptures she knows the word of God she reads the Bible from cover to cover uh, two times a year three times a year whatever she's so holy she knows the scriptures so you trust that but yet wait a second the scripture says not the backbite Backbiting is a very key sign, in, in, in a, a very revealing look into an individual's heart, a person who backbites. Zero uh, percent of the time is it okay to backbite. Just like zero percent of the time it's okay to sexually assault someone. It's never okay. There's not a reason or an excuse to backbite. Now, the church, this is so common today. Both, actually, it's common. But, you know, backbiting is so common in the church today. Hello? that people think it's not a big deal, but we see that the Lord thinks it's a big deal. The murmuring in the camps, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, we see that the Lord hates backbiting. Let me continue on here in verse 28. <clears throat> a perverse man sows strife, and a whisperer, and this is key, this is very key, listen to this, a whisperer separates close friends. And you heard me say this again, that this is very common that, that backbiting, there's common friends involved in this. The person who's angry may know both. The person that they're angry with and then the common friend that's common friends with John and Rachel both. Okay? And so, again, here's the scripture. Proverbs 16, 28. A perverse man sows strife and a whisperer separates close friends. See, backbiting can destroy friendships that have been friendships for have been friends for a long time. Backbiting can destroy long-standing friendships because the backbiter they put a, they put individuals in the position to where they have to make a choice. And again, that's very prideful. That's a very evil thing to do versus just going to the individual and saying, hey, I've got a problem with you. They try to involve other people in, in this. It's very evil. And that's the division and strife that the scripture speaks of all through the scriptures to not walk in that kind of malice, maliciousness, and to not walk in division and strife and backbiting. Not See, the scripture wasn't addressing you being in division because you're in the kingdom of light and another person is in the kingdom of darkness. Now, I'm not talking about being disrespectful to people. I mean, someone could not know the Lord and we can rip them the shreds and be disrespectful, calling people all kind of uh, terrible names. You know, if someone is gay, I'm not going to rip them to shreds because they're gay. I'm going to walk in love. I'm going to shine the light of Christ and pray, Lord, I pray that you soften their heart and give me an opportunity to to, 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 to share the gospel to them. I, hope, I, I pray that, 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 can, that, that a can of worms get open where I can share the word. Open the door, I should say, not the can of worms, but I, I pray that the door gets open, that I can share the word. Hello? So, let me take you to Proverbs. And again, like I said, backbiting often happens with common friends. And that's why uh, Proverbs 16, 28 states what it says. 
because backbiting can destroy friendships uh, that have been long standing. Proverbs 26 20. Uh, For lack of wood, the fire goes out, and where there is a whisperer, contention ceases. Hello? For lack of wood, the fire goes out, and where, I'm sorry, and where there is no whisperer, I think I left that no part out, right? Where there is no whisperer, contention ceases. So when somebody's backbiting, someone's, and, and when someone comes to you and, and they're backbiting, the best thing to do is say, whoa, 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 whoa. And even if they're more, in your eyes, they're more mature than you in the faith, maybe they have more knowledge than you in the faith in your eyes, but this is very fundamental. This is very one-on-one. -on -one. And it's not uncommon that someone who's very seasoned in the word of God is a backbiter. We see this all the time. Now, if you look at that person as higher than you in the faith, no, this is where you have to say, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to be part of this. I'm not going to be part of that. Maybe you need to go speak to that individual one-on-one -on -one because that's what the scripture says. Okay, somebody's status or seniority in the word does not uh, trump the word. Hello, it's not does not veto the word. So that's something that we have to be very careful about. And and a person who backbites speaks volumes about the vicious viciousness in their heart. Uh, there's some spirits at work, some strongholds at work in in people's lives that do that. One is pride. Obviously, that's the number one control. Is another one because you want to control the the narrative of what other people think about a certain individual so you whisper behind their back another one is manipulation it's a manipulative spirit uh, you can also say a Jezebel spirit majority of the time uh, you know uh, for the most part women are more guilty of this than men now men do it too but I'm just saying on, per, on a percent on a percentage basis you see that more women do it's, it's like girl talk and see, I like to say it like this, that Satan is the creator of girl talk. I'm sure in the garden, Satan came up to, to, to Eve and said, hey, girl, hey, girl. Psst. Satan be befriended her first before he really went into all this. So we have to be careful of these things. Uh, that's my message. Uh, I just pray that uh, we open our eyes and our hearts to these things because, like I said, this is something that's very common. It's all around us, and that we don't want to be part of that. We don't want to. We don't want that to be a stumbling block in our life. Either way, we don't want to be the the backbiter, and then we also don't want to be the person listening to the backbiter and giving them a platform to speak. Uh, the The way to handle a backbiter is to cut them off and say, "No, no, no. I'm 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 going to drop out of this. That's between you." And that individual, I think it's very, very important that we do, do not be, be people who, who backbite and cause strife and division, the kind of division that, that was spoken of in Galatians chapter five. Hello. Now, again, we're going to be in division because we're not part of the kingdom of darkness. We are, that's, that's understandable. But the division here is speaking of backbiting and, and speaking uh, evil about people behind they're back. Uh, I did want to share. Ephesians chapter four with you. As I leave you. Ephesians 431. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Verse 32, and be you kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you.